Hello? I want to talk to Walker Wiley. Well, this is Wiley. Who's this? You know what time it is, Mr. Wiley? Yes, it's 5 o'clock in the morning. Do you wake me up to tell me what time it is? No, Mr. Wiley. I called to tell you your time is up. You're not fit to live. You'll never live to be mayor. You'll never live to see tomorrow. Come on, wait a minute. Who is this? Hello. Hello. Herald Dispatch. Give me the city editor. I got a story for you, and get it straight. Walker Wiley will never live to be mayor. He won't live to see tomorrow. A phone call in the night, a threat to kill, and then a public announcement that the killing will take place. Is this man just a publicity seeker? Or will he be driven to kill? Will he succumb to the impulse? That's the name of our story, the impulse. Our principal players are Mr. Robert Lansing, Miss Whitney Blake, Mr. Lance Fuller, Mr. Elisha Cook, Mr. Steve Brody, and Mr. Conrad Nagel. Before very long, one of these girls, unwittingly, will be carrying a deadly bomb through the crowded city. As sure as my name is Boris Karloff, one man's impulse will paralyze a great metropolis for six terrifying hours. I do hope you're not addicted to biting your nails, because this, I'm quite sure you will agree, is a thriller. Sergeant Hannigan, police special squad. Mr. Wiley said when you came, you should go right in. What are you doing, Mr. Wiley? Asking for it? Who are you? That's just what I mean. You have a threat like this, and then you have your secretary send somebody in here without any verification. If I happen to be the guy who made that threat, Mr. Wiley, you'd be dead by now. You're Lieutenant Rome. Fortunately for you. This is Sergeant Hannigan. How are you, Sergeant? Lieutenant. Chief Pepper told me he was sending you over, so I told the girl outside just to... Look, Mr. Wiley, I don't want to sound like cops and robbers, but you've got to take a threat like this more seriously. Mm. You can go, Carolyn. We'll finish this later. Look, Lieutenant. You know, this man didn't just call me. He phoned every radio station and newspaper in town. Gave him the same song and dance. I can't take a man like that seriously. You think he's a crank? A publicity seeker? Well, doesn't it look that way? Killers don't advertise in advance. Oh, no. no. That's theory, Mr. Wiley. Sometimes they do. Hannigan here can tell you about sweet old Mrs. Krauss. Yeah. She wrote letters to her relatives telling them they were going to be poisoned. What happened? They got poisoned. Oh. All right, boys, sit down. How do we begin? How do you suspect anybody? I haven't got the faintest idea. Who'd want to kill me? Well, you've come a long way up, Mr. Wiley. Isn't there somebody whose toes you might have stepped on? Somebody who might nourish a grudge? Well, not enough to kill me, no. Please, absolutely no. I can't think of anyone. All right, no suspects. And you just cooperate with us. We'll have two of my men at your home, one in your office, and one with you personally. And I mean all the time, 24 hours a day. We'll also keep a guard on the building. Hmm. Well, that's going to be a little tough, Lieutenant. I've got... Say, a hundred appointments today. Some in the city, some way outside. All right, just keep them. As long as you've got one of my men with you. A moving target is harder to hit. All right. Well, the sooner I get moving, the better. Oh. Say, there'll be one time today I'll be a sitting duck. What's that? I'm on TV tonight. Paul Willis visit. Can you cancel? And prove to everybody how scared I am? <clears throat> Not on your life. Besides, this is too important to my campaign, Lieutenant. Willis has a big audience. 
All right, the poll with the show. That's 11 o'clock. Where's it going to be, your home? No, no. Right here in the office. All right, I'll have the place covered starting right now. Good. Now, your job is to go on about your business, Mr. Wiley. And ours is to try to keep you alive. And as of 4 o'clock this afternoon, the leading story is still the anonymous threat against the life of Walker Wiley, commissioner of water and power, prominent businessman, and candidate for the mayorality of our city. While it is still possible that the whole thing may be an elaborate hoax, police are taking no chances. Although Mr. Wiley is insisting on carrying out his regular schedule, full protection has been provided by the police special squad under Lieutenant Brian Rome. Mr. Wiley will go through with his scheduled TV appearance tonight at 11 on the Paul Willis program. According to Police Chief Pepper, complete precautions have been enforced since early this morning. It is safe to say that no unauthorized person will have any chance of getting near Wiley for the duration of his television broadcast. What a hassle. I hope his honor doesn't make a habit of this TV bit. Mr. Hannigan, you're in the police. Is someone really trying to kill Mr. Wiley? I don't know, honey. Where there's a threat, there's always a risk. They told me to change the light bulbs in Mr. Wiley's office or the TV program. Change the light bulbs. What did you just pick out of that drawer? I've never seen you before. You don't belong here. Hannigan! Hannigan! <laughs> Get me the building superintendent's office. I must get some. Never mind. What is it? Lieutenant, thank God you're here. What happened? I, I caught a man putting a package this big in Mr. Wiley's desk. When he saw me, he grabbed it back and ran. Very well indeed. You can't mistake him. Those maintenance coveralls are white. Excuse me. Any outstanding feature? Uh, he limps. Hey, Holmes. Stand back. Or 
right, take it down. Police special. Come on, let's go. What'd you do with it? Girls. A bag. Elevator. Put it in some girl's bag in the elevator? When's it set for? What time? Uh, tonight. Eleven. The girl, who was she? What did she look like? into some girl's bag in the elevator this afternoon. According to the operator, there were 12 or 13 girls in that elevator. Out of all of the women who work here or were visiting this building this afternoon, we have to find the right one. As far as we know, the bomb is set for 11 o'clock. That means we have five hours to find the girl, so let me go do it, will you? Thank you. Chief from the hospital about Hannigan? Yeah, they said his eyes to be all right. Lieutenant, I have station KQAY on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, hello, who is this? Mr. Stanley, this is Lieutenant Rome. Now grab a pencil and take this down. A bomb, three or four inches square, was slipped into the purse of a woman in an elevator in the Heinz building at five o'clock today. Yeah, that's right, a bomb. All women who left the building at that time should examine their pocketbooks. If such a package is found, telephone the police immediately. Put the purse out in the yard and keep everybody away from it until the police arrive. Have you got that? All right, good, and I want to repeat it every half hour. Some girl walking around this town with a bomb. You can save her life. George, what about that list of telephone numbers of the business offices? Just about ready. All right, let's take what we got and get back to headquarters. There'll be a battery of men working telephones as soon as we can get them. Right. Oh, Lieutenant. That right what I just heard? Man with a bomb got chased out of here, slipped the bomb in some girl's purse, then got himself killed by a truck. That right? That's right. Brandage, you're off, Mr. Waddy. You go on back. According to his driver's license, the man's name was Harry Elser. You ever hear of him? Elser, Elser. No, doesn't mean a thing. Well, that certainly takes me off the hook, Lieutenant. Fine, fine. Oh, yeah, that's just peachy. Oh, I'm not forgetting about the girl, Lieutenant. What, you fellas will find her in plenty of time, I'm sure of that. Yeah, thank you for the faith, Mr. Wiley. Come on, knock it off. Now, Bernie here has a list of all of the business offices in the Heinz building. You get some guy in each office who can give you a list of all of the girls who work there. Find out whether their girls leave at 5 or 5.30. The girls who leave at 5.30, you can skip. Now, the girls who leave at 5, you start contacting. If there are no phones, get their names and addresses to Bernie. He'll relay them to men in the squad cars. Also, find out what women visitors left the offices at about 5 o'clock. A woman with a bomb in her purse may be somebody who doesn't even work in the building, but was just visiting. All right, now get on the phone. Dennis? Yeah. What the bomb experts tell you? Well, I say with the type of bomb you described, it didn't strong enough to knock over a building or anything, but it could kill maybe 12 or 15 people in a group. Could it contain a timing device? No, not a clock anyway. It's too small for that. But it could contain a chemical timing device. They say the OSS during the war had an incendiary pencil. They had a timing device in it that was accurate up to half an hour. What time is this thing supposed to go? 11 o'clock. Figure maybe a half hour before or a little later. Oh, uh... This type of bomb, they say, if it uh, gets shaken up at all, it could go at any time. It's good to know. Hey, George. George, we're not going to do any good here. Let's drive out to Elsa's and see what we can find out, all right? All right. Bernie, if anybody wants me, get me in the car. Right. 
So if you're on that elevator at that time, just about five o'clock, this is what you must do. Do not touch your handbag. Telephone the police immediately at City 12000. Repeat, City 12000. Well, I seem to be on the job. Seems like I should have been this afternoon. You're blaming yourself worse than usual on this one, how come? I had one of my lousy hunches, George. Went over to Wiley's house. I thought maybe the bomber might pull the switch and show up there. If it hadn't been for that, I would have been in Wiley's office and some girl wouldn't be walking around with a loaded bag. What do you think we'll find at Elsa's? I don't know. We might get some specific information on what kind of a bomb it was. We get the whole town in an uproar, we might find out it's a false alarm. Possible. Could be he's an amateur and he bungled it so the thing won't even go off. Just don't bet on it. Those visitors are what bug me. We can miss one of them easy. Yeah. All right, so she doesn't turn on the radio, she doesn't turn on her TV. She doesn't look in her purse. So we can't help her. And just like that. Just like that, George. Some innocent girl blown to pieces, and I had to have one of my lousy hunches. You take these things too personal, Brian. And I've noticed lately you take it on yourself for every case we work on. What's with you? Maybe I just don't live right, huh? You sure don't. It's been six years since Amy passed away. I'll bet you haven't been out with a woman in that whole time. Come off it. All right, Amy was the greatest. But life goes on, a guy's got to keep punching. Look at Jenny and me. When we lost a little girl, I thought the whole world had been kicked right out from underneath me. We had to pick up the pieces and keep going on. Now, we got the new little one. Everything's great again. <laughs> What's so funny? Wouldn't it be great if you found this girl with a bomb in her purse and she turned out to be a big, beautiful, luscious thing and, well, the two of you decided to... Hey, wouldn't that be something, huh? George, my boy. You ought to write for TV, you know. much. The lady says he lived alone, kept pretty much to himself. What did he work at? Nothing lately. She said he was some kind of an engineer with a water and power company. He got fired about two years ago. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Motive. Wiley, water and power commissioner. He probably blamed him for losing his job. Uh-huh. <sighs> All right, I'll look over the house. You check the garage. Bye. Right. George's wife? Yeah, I... Stood by for a few minutes. What can you say? Yeah. Lost. She's with her mother now. Why would the guy booby trap his garage? No, I, I don't know. <sighs> the twisted mind, like that lady was set to hold up there if we came for him. All right, what's the score? We're down to 16. Not a clue, though. Hi, Lieutenant. Nary a bomb, nary a bomb. So here's five names you can cross right off your list. I wish you could have seen some of the things I could got out of those women's handbags. You wouldn't believe it. Yeah, that's perfume. Lieutenant, I think you better write me a note so my wife won't clobber me. Well, sometimes, son, you just kill me, you know that. Hey, what's the matter with him? I never saw him act that way before. George Dumont's dead, blown up. You know how close they were.
Okay, what's with this first one, Kimball? She's a commercial artist. An agency in the building handles her stuff. Never mind the biography. Why can't you reach her? Sorry. No answer from her phone. No one home when I sent a car. But I got some more stuff from the agency. Then the one she'd be dining out with her boyfriend. That's a Robert Larrymore of Northern Lithograph. His favorite restaurants are Mazarin's and Angelo's. And the seventh heaven if he's in a dancing mood. Nice work. Now, what about Delquis? She was a name on an appointment pad in this Rogers office for 4.30 this afternoon. The Heinz Building super phoned it in. This Rogers is a young architect. No secretary, and he can't be located. I right, leave Brundage in charge from here on in. You and I better do the legwork. Okay, starting when? Starting right now. I'll take numbers one and two. You take three and four. Keep in constant touch with me on your car radio. Right. Bernie. Yep. Listen, the... Experts checked over this garage. This stuff is the latest and high explosive. And don't just be careful. You be very, very careful. Okay. Did you enjoy my company? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I always do. Now, Miss Kimball, for the hundredth time, may I beg for the supreme honor of your hand in marriage? Bob, you promised not to tonight. Well, I can't help it. I'm crazy about you. Look, Jane, why don't we take the plunge? If it's your work you're thinking about... Excuse me, Mr. Larimore, Miss Jane Kimball. Yes? Sir. Who, who, who are you? Police. Lieutenant Rome, special squad. I have to talk to Miss Kimball. Well, here I am. What did you want to talk to me about? Miss Kimball, is it correct that you were at the Heinz building this afternoon? You left at 5 o'clock. Yes, that's right. You took elevator number one on the west side, is that correct? Yes, yes, I did. Oh, what is this, a quiz game? Tell Miss Kimball what you want, and let's get it over with. Is that the same bag you were using then? Oh, yes, as a matter of fact. Oh, now, wait a minute. Bob, I'm sure Lieutenant Rome knows what he's doing. I wish you'd explain it. I'll explain it, just don't react. I want to cause a panic in the restaurant. This afternoon, a man was caught trying to plant a bomb in Walker Wiley's office. It's a little thing, but it's very powerful. The outer way, elevator number one on the west side. On the trip down, something, a fear of impulse, maybe he'd want to be caught with it. Made him slip it into a woman's handbag. But what are you going to do about it? Well, I'd just like to borrow your handbag for a little while. Oh, I don't know about this. You want to see my badge again? Bob. All right, now I'm going to take that thing from outside the window. It'll be safer that way. I'll go through the side door. Don't do anything to attract any attention. I expect you both to cooperate. He is on the level. We could be killed at almost any moment. He's a cop. Could have been saving my life, you know. Mm, maybe, but the odds are about a thousand to one against you having a bomb. What's the matter with you? You'll be nice to him when he comes back. Oh, here comes Dick Tracy. That's all yours. You found everything intact. No bomb. I know. I was watching. Oh, it's all right, Lieutenant. I wasn't disobeying orders. I was very careful not to draw attention to myself. Nice work, Rome. Maybe the lieutenant would like a drink, Bob. How about it? You want a snort, Rome? No, thanks. Miss Kimball, you got on that elevator at the top floor. Yes. 
What do you want me to remember? The number of stops the elevator made and the floors, possibly. Oh, I doubt it. Uh, three or four stops. If it was faces you wanted me to remember. What about faces? Well, I have almost total recall on faces. I make a living by drawing them, so... You mean you could draw every face on that elevator? Well, everyone I happen to look at, yes, I could try. Well, I try. Oh, yes. Elser. Man with the bomb? He was standing right next to me. I think the poor girl who really has it walking around not knowing. You'll find her, won't you? Well, let's keep that thought. We only have an hour and a half of the outside. I'll take this if I may. Thank you very much, Miss Kimball. Good night, Mr. Carmel. Lots of lock room. Oh, I wonder where the waiter is. I need another drink. Room. Try out Jane Kimball. Anything for Bernie? Yeah. There's uh, two more canceled out. He's looking after number five. We ought to be getting closer, huh? Yeah, further away. I'm going after the dog was woman now. I told you I'd be home at nine. It's only a quarter past now. Why all the questions? What were you doing between four and six this afternoon? I was shopping with Gladys Rubin. I phoned the Rubens at 5.45. The sister said that Gladys had just left to meet you. Now, what were you doing between four and six? All right, if you must know, I was at the bridge club, but I didn't lose any money. You're lying. I phoned the bridge club, too. You were with Rogers, weren't you? No. You spent most of the afternoon with young Rogers, and you weren't discussing architecture. You're a filthy If you think suspicious. you can put anything like that over on me, you're out of your head. I don't have to stay here and listen to this. I'm getting out of here, and I'm not coming back. You're staying here until I get the truth. Who's there? Dahlquist? Is there a Miss or a Mrs. Dahlquist here, first name Marjorie? I'm Mrs. Marjorie Dahlquist. What do you want? Police Special Squad, Lieutenant Rome. Well, what is it? Something about my car? I've done anything wrong. Well, it's nothing like that, Mrs. Dahlquist. We need your help. It's urgent. Yes? Were you visiting the Hines building this afternoon, and did you leave about 5 o'clock? What right do you have to question me? Mrs. Dahlquist, this is a matter of people's lives, maybe yours. Now, when you left the building, did you take elevator number one on the west side? Of course not. I wasn't in the building or anywhere near the building. What makes you think she was there, Lieutenant? Well, her name was on an appointment pad, one of the business officers. Rogers, an architect for 4 p.m. Why, 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 that's impossible. Oh, I, I think I know what happened. I, I did make an appointment last week, but then I called and canceled it. Well, Mrs. Dawkins, we're not concerned with the appointment, just with the elevator trip. On West Elevator Number 1 at 5 o'clock today, one of the passengers was a man escaping from the police. To get rid of a bomb he was carrying, he slipped it into an unknown woman's handbag. So far, we haven't been able to locate that woman. The bomb was set to explode at 11 o'clock. A sharp movement could set it off any time. Hold it! So no. you were with him, so you don't care what I do with this! No, don't! Dawkins. You were with him. <laughs> Dawkins, give me the bag. You were with him! Okay. Dawkins! <laughs> Okay, Mr. Douglas. Yeah. It's fine.
missed out. Somehow, some girl didn't get in on any of those lists. So what do we do? Sit around and wait for a girl to get blown up, I guess. Now you can call your mother. And don't say I don't look after you. <laughs> You're wonderful. Hello, uh, will you get Pleasant 88866 for me, please? You know something? You look beautiful even when you're phoning. All right, thank you. I'll try again later. Mother of mine, I never know where she is. <laughs> Did you get a load of those glasses? If a high wind got on them, he'd fly. Glasses. What? Glasses? That girl. Bob, I've just thought of something. I've got to call Lieutenant Rome at once. Might be terribly important. Yeah. Take a look at this. See if you recognize either one of those two women's faces. Both of them are on the elevator. Yeah, that's Mrs. Howes for the last one I got. The other one's one of my first lot. Special squad. Yeah, sure, it's ready. Just a minute. Jane Kimball for you says it's urgent. Hello, Miss Kimball. Lieutenant, did you find the girl yet? No, why? Well, I just remembered someone else who was in that elevator. Can you draw her face as well as you did the other two? Better, she's an easy subject. Well, then get drawing. Please, are you still at that restaurant? All right, I'll be right over. Walk ready. Right That's her, Lieutenant. Thanks. Thank you very much, Miss Kimball. Well, that's the last of Prince Valiant. I hope. Most unfunny. Mother? Where in the world have you been? I've been worried about you. Well, I was home for a few minutes at 5.30. There wasn't a sign of you. My dear, if you wouldn't talk so much, I'd be able to tell you what's happened. I'm going off with Martha Bailey for the weekend. Yes, I'll be back on Monday. Goodbye, dear. Have fun. There, now. Let's see. You have my suitcase, I have my coat, and... Oh, dear. Hurry, Agnes. We have a train to catch. You see? That's typical of Janie. Such a brilliant child. But she's so untidy. She comes in, throws down her drawings, and forgets all about them. I'll just put this in her room. And then we'll be off. Agnes, will you please hurry it up? Don't be impatient, Martha. Here I am. Yes, what is it? Police, Special Squad, Lieutenant Rome. Miss Snyder, your mother told us where you were when you left the Hines building well, this, this afternoon. This is that bomb business, is it? Well, you're wasting your time, Lieutenant. I heard the broadcast at 6 and checked in both my bags. There wasn't any bomb. And you couldn't take five minutes out to let us know? Why should I call? I mean, how should I know? There was no bomb, period. Did you say both your bags? Purse miscellaneous. Attaché case, work. Where's the phone? Boots, cast face, anything. A couple of boots in the corner of Alm and Wedgwood. Or Jane Kimball, after all. How come? That's my fault. He also said girl's bag. Me, I give out handbag. I'm not smart enough to figure some girl might have another bag besides their purse. She told me she had a bunch of drawings with her. Twenty minutes of eleven. The Kumar house members in there. I'll get the rest.
restaurant a few minutes ago. They went home at the house. You figure she's taking this other bag around with her? I don't, I know. Maybe she dropped it off at the house before she went out. All right, that's where we'll go anyway. Let's hope she's on her way there. If not, we're sunk. <laughs> being mad at me. Oh. Let's just forget about it, hmm? shall we? Oh. There won't be a newscast until 11. Oh, there might be a special bulletin. Who in the world? I'll get it. See Miss Kimball right away. I'll tell her you're here. Miss Kimball. Oh, Lieutenant, what? When you left your agent's office this afternoon, did you take any pictures with you? Yes, the ones he didn't want. Why did you carry them in? Well, my portfolio, of course. Oh, but you said handbag. I'm stupid. Where is it now, the portfolio? Oh, well, let me think. Um, I put it down in here. I'm sure I did. Mother must have put it away somewhere. It'll be in my room. Now, wait a minute. Don't go in there. All right, now you just reach inside and turn on the light. You show me where it is. There it is on the table over there. All right, now you two get as far back as you can. I'm going to take it outside. of yours, do you? Okay, Brian. Could you run another blank? Okay, Miss Kimball, no bomb. I'm sorry to trouble you. say I told you. I'll apologize. And politely this time. Cut out the postmortem spot, please. I'm sorry. Look, I'm awfully tired. Why don't you just say goodnight? I have a heart, darling. Don't I even get a drink for the road? All right, if you must. One, you mix it yourself. Okay. You want one? No. Just think of that man, Bob. He's running around trying to save a girl's life. She doesn't even know. It's 11. Now I can hear that newscast. <clears throat> Despite my jesting, my lady, my love which I bear for you is boundless in this lowly, aching heart. Bob, you clown. <laughs> I know. Please, I want to hear the newscast. Come on, now, Jane, let's get serious. Simple. Oh, no, no, not again. I just thought of something. You said that your mother moved that case? Yes, she did. Well, the bomb could have dropped out when she moved it. Now, where did you put it when you came home? Oh, I don't remember. I think I put it in that chair. Rome, don't you think we've had about enough of this? No. No, I put it, I put it there at that end, under that coat. Yeah, that's it. Let's see, 
11, that thing's gonna go off. Come on, move, go! It's all over, and suddenly I'm, I'm shaky. Yeah. Well, there's no reason to shake now. Of course not. It must have been an awful day for you. Well, I'll sleep tonight. Well, that explosion will probably bring a crowd. I guess I better get out there. Um. Do you have to go? I mean, can't you stay a while? Have a cup of coffee. What happened to your boyfriend? Hmm. It's funny how you think you know someone and suddenly you don't. I told him to keep running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I... I guess my sergeant could take care of the crowd. Then you'll stay. Now, suddenly I feel a great need for a cup of coffee. Special squad under Lieutenant Brian Rome. Mr. Wiley will go through with his scheduled TV appearance tonight at 11 on the Paul Willis program. According to Police Chief Pepper, complete precautions have been enforced since early this morning. It is safe to say that no unauthorized person will have any chance of getting near Wiley for the duration of his television broadcast. What a hassle. I hope His Honor doesn't make a habit of this TV bit. Again. You're in the police. Is someone really trying to kill Mr. Wiley? I don't know, honey. Where there's a threat, there's always a risk. They told me to change the light bulbs in Mr. Wiley's office or the TV program. Change the light bulbs. 
did you just sneak out of that drawer? I've never seen you before. You don't belong here. Hannigan! Hannigan! <laughs> Hello? H hello? Emergency. Get me the building superintendent's office. Then I think you better write me a note so my wife won't clobber me. You know, sometimes, son, you just kill me, you know that. Hey, what's the matter with him? I never saw him act that way before. George Dumont's dead, blown up. You know how close they were. All right, what's with this first one, Kimball? She's a commercial artist. An agency in the building handles her stuff. Never mind the biography, why can't you reach her? Sorry. No answer from her phone, no one home, and I sent a car. But I got some more stuff from the agency. Then the one she'd be dining out with her boyfriend, that's a Robert Larrymore of Northern Lithograph. His favorite restaurants are Mazarin's and Angelo's and the Seventh Heaven if he's in a dancing mood. Okay, okay, that's nice work. Now, what about Delquis? She was a name on an appointment pad in this Rogers office for 4.30 this afternoon. The Heinz Building super phoned it in. This Rogers is a young architect, no secretary, and he can't be located. I leave Brundage in charge from here on in. You and I better do the legwork. Okay, starting when? Starting right now. I'll take numbers one and two. You take three and four. Keep in constant touch with me on your car radio. Right. Bernie. Yep. Listen, the experts checked over this garage. This stuff is the latest in high explosive. And don't just be careful. You be very, very careful. Okay. Did you enjoy my company? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I always do. Now, Miss Campbell, for the hundredth time, may I beg for the supreme honor of your hand in marriage? Bob, you promised not to tonight. Well, I can't help it. I'm crazy about you. Look, Jane, why don't we take the plunge? If it's your work you're thinking about... Excuse me, Mr. Larimore, Miss Jane Kimball. Yes? <laughs> Who are you? Police. Lieutenant Rome, special squad. I have to talk to Miss Kimball. Well, here I am. What did you want to talk to me about? Miss Kimball, is it correct that you were at the Heinz building this afternoon? You left at 5 o'clock. Yes, that's right. You took elevator number one on the west side, is that correct? Yes, yes, I did. Oh, what is this, a quiz game? Tell Miss Kimball what you want and let's get it over with. Is that the same bag you were using then? Oh, yes, as a matter of fact. Oh, now, wait a minute. Bob, I'm sure oh, Lieutenant Rome knows what he's doing. I wish you'd explain it. I'll explain it, just don't react. I want to cause a panic in the restaurant. This afternoon, a man was caught trying to plant a bomb in Walker Wiley's office. It's a little thing, but it's very powerful. He got away, elevator number one on the west side. On the trip down, something, a fear of impulse, maybe he didn't want to be caught with it. Made him slip it into a woman's handbag. But what are you going to do about it? Well, I'd just like to borrow your handbag for a little while. Oh, I don't know about this. Although Mr. Wiley is insisting on carrying out his regular schedule, full protection has been provided by the police special squad under Lieutenant Brian Rome. Mr. Wiley will go through with his scheduled TV appearance tonight at 11 on the Paul Willis program. According to Police Chief Pepper, complete precautions have been enforced since early this morning. It is safe to say that no unauthorized person will have any chance of getting near Wiley for the duration of his television broadcast. What a hassle. I hope his honor doesn't make a habit of this TV bit. Mr. Hannigan, you're in the police. Is someone really trying to kill Mr. Wiley? I don't know, honey. Where there's a threat, there's always a risk.
Mm. They told me to change the light bulbs in Mr. Wiley's office or the TV program. Change the light bulbs. What did you just pick out of that drawer? I've never seen you before. You don't belong here. Hannigan! Hannigan! <laughs> Get me the building superintendent's office. Chief Pepper, complete precautions have been enforced since early this morning. It is safe to say that no unauthorized person will have any chance of getting near Wiley for the duration of his television broadcast. What a hassle. I hope his honor doesn't make a habit of this TV bit. Again. You're in the police. Is someone really trying to kill Mr. Wiley? I don't know, honey. Where there's a threat, there's always a risk. They told me to change the light bulbs in Mr. Wiley's office or the TV program. Bulbs. What did you just pick out of that drawer? I've never seen you before. You don't belong here. Hannigan! Hannigan! <laughs> Get me the building superintendent's office.
really don't think there's a bomb in that case of yours, do you? Okay, Brian. And you're another blank. say I told you. I'll apologize. And politely this time. Cut out the postmortem spot, please. I'm sorry. Look, I'm awfully tired. Why don't you just say goodnight? I have a heart, darling. Don't I even get a drink for the road? All right, if you must. One, you mix it yourself. Okay. You want one? No. Just think of that man, Bob. He's running around trying to save a girl's life. She doesn't even know. It's 11. Now I can hear that newscast. <clears throat> Despite my jesting, my lady, my love which I bear for you is boundless in this lowly, aching heart. Bob, you clown. <laughs> I know. Please, I want to hear the newscast. Come on, now, Jane, let's get serious. Simple. Oh, no, no, not again. Simple, I just thought of something. You said that your mother moved that case? Yes, she did. Well, the bomb could have dropped out when she moved it. Now, where did you put it when you came home? Oh, I don't remember. I think I put it in that chair. Rome, don't you think we've had about enough of this? No. No, I put it, I put it there at that end, under that coat. Yeah, that's it. It's 11, that thing's gonna go off. of yours, do you? Okay, Brian. And you're another blank. say I told you. I'll apologize. And politely this time. Cut out the postmortem spot, please. I'm sorry. Look, I'm awfully tired. Why don't you just say goodnight? I have a heart, darling. Don't I even get a drink for the road? All right, if you must. One, you mix it yourself. Okay. You want one? No. Just think of that man, Bob. He's running around trying to save a girl's life. She doesn't even know. It's 11. Now I can hear that newscast. <clears throat> Despite my jesting, my lady, my love which I bear for you is boundless in this lowly, aching heart. <laughs> You clown. I know. Please, I want to hear the newscast. Come on, now, Jane. Let's get serious. Simple. Oh, no. No. Not again. Simple, I just 
thought of something. You said that your mother moved that case? Yes, she did. Well, the bomb could have dropped out when she moved it. Now, where did you put it when you came home? Oh, I don't remember. I think I put it in that chair. Rome, don't you think we've had about enough of this? No. No, I put it... I put it there, at that end. Under that coat. his job. He's a cop. Could have been saving my life, you know. Mm. Maybe, but the odds are about a thousand to one against you having a bomb. What's the matter with you? You be nice to him when he comes back. Oh, here comes Dick Tracy. That's all yours. You find everything intact. No bomb. I know. I was watching. Oh, it's all right, Lieutenant. I wasn't disobeying orders. I was very careful not to draw attention to myself. Nice work, Rome. Maybe the lieutenant would like a drink, Bob. How about it? You want to snort, Rome? No, thanks. It's Kimball. You got on that elevator at the top floor. Yes. What do you want me to remember? The number of stops the elevator made and the floor is possible. Oh, I doubt it. Uh, three or four stops. If it was faces you wanted me to remember. What about faces? Well, I have almost total recall on faces. I make a living by drawing them, so... You mean you could draw every face on that elevator? Well, everyone I happen to look at, yes, I could try. I try. Oh, yes. right next to me. You'll think of the poor girl who really has it walking around not knowing. You'll find her, won't you? Now let's keep that thought. We only have an hour and a half of the outside. I'll take this if I may. Thank you very much, Miss Kimball. Good night, Mr. Carmel. Lots of luck, Rome. Oh, I wonder where the waiter is. I need another drink. Rome. Strike out Jane Kimball. Anything for Bernie? Yeah, there's uh, two more canceled out. He's looking after number five. We ought to be getting closer, huh? Yeah, further away. I'm going after the dog was woman now. The incendiary pencil. They had a timing device in it that was accurate up to a half an hour. What time is this thing supposed to go? 11 o'clock. Figure maybe a half hour before or a little later. Oh, uh... This type of bomb, let's see if it uh, gets shaken up at all. It could go at any time. It's good to know. Hey, George. George, we're not going to do any good here. Let's drive out to Elsa's and see what we can find out, all right? All right. Bernie, if anybody wants me, get me in the car. Right. So if you're on that elevator at that time, just about 5 o'clock, this is what you must do. Do not touch your handbag. Telephone the police immediately at City 12000. Repeat, City 12000. Well, they seem to be on the job. Sounds like I should have been this afternoon. You're blaming yourself worse than usual on this one, how come? I had one of my lousy hunches, George. Went over to Wiley's house. I thought maybe the bomber might pull the switch and show up there. If it hadn't been for that, I would have been in Wiley's office and some girl wouldn't be walking around with a loaded bag. What do you think we'll find at Elsa's? I don't know. We might get some specific information on what kind of a bomb it was. We get the whole town in an uproar, we might find out it's a false alarm. Possible. Could be he's an amateur and he bungled it so the thing won't even go off. 
Just don't bet on it. Those visitors are what bug me. We can miss one of them easy. Yeah. All right, so she doesn't turn on the radio, she doesn't turn on her TV. She doesn't look in her purse. So we can't help her. And just like that. Just like that, George. Some innocent girl blown to pieces, and I had to have one of my lousy hunches. You take these things too personal, Brian. You know, I've noticed lately you take it on yourself for every case we work on. What's with you? The guy just don't live right, huh? You sure don't. It's been six years since Amy passed away. I'll bet you haven't been out with a woman in that whole time. Come off it. All right, Amy was the greatest. But life goes on, a guy's got to keep punching. Look at Jenny and me. When we lost a little girl, I thought the whole world had been kicked right out from underneath me. We had to pick up the pieces and keep going on. Now, we got the new little one. Everything's great again. <laughs> What's so funny? Wouldn't it be great if you found this girl with a bomb in her purse and she turned out to be a big, beautiful, luscious thing? And, well, the two of you decided to... Hey, wouldn't that be something, huh? George, my boy. You ought to write for TV, you know. Nothing much. The lady says he lived alone, kept pretty much to himself. Well, he... I put it there, at that end, under that coat. Yeah, that's it. It's 11, that thing's gonna go off. Get out of here. Come on, move, go! all over and suddenly I'm, I'm shaky. Yeah. Well, there's no reason to shake now. Of course not. It must have been an awful day for you. I'll sleep tonight. Well, that explosion will probably bring a crowd. I guess I better get out there. Um, do you have to go? I mean, can't you stay a while? Have a cup of coffee? What happened to your boyfriend? Hmm. It's funny how you think you know someone and suddenly you don't. I told him to keep running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I... I guess my sergeant could take care of the crowd. Then you'll stay. Now, suddenly I feel a great need for a cup of coffee.
I want to talk to Walker Wiley. Well, this is Wiley. Who's this? You know what time it is, Mr. Wiley? Yes, it's 5 o'clock in the morning. Do you wake me up to tell me what time it is? No, Mr. Wiley. I called to tell you your time is up. You're not fit to live. You'll never live to be mayor. You'll never live to see tomorrow. Come on, wait a minute. Who is this? Hello. Dispatch. Give me the city editor. I got a story for you, and get it straight. Walker Wiley will never live to be mayor. He won't live to see tomorrow. A phone call in the night, a threat to kill, and then a public announcement that the killing will take place. Is this man just a publicity seeker, or will he be driven to kill? Will he succumb to the impulse? That's the name of our story, The Impulse. Our principal players are Mr. Robert Lansing, Miss Whitney Blake, Mr. Lance Fuller, Mr. Elisha Cook, Mr. Steve Brody, and Mr. Conrad Nagel. Before very long, one of these girls, unwittingly, will be carrying a deadly bomb through the crowded city. As sure as my name is Boris Karloff, one man's impulse will paralyze a great metropolis for six terrifying hours. I do hope you're not addicted to biting your nails, because this, I'm quite sure you will agree, is a thriller.